So today my Holbein watercolor 18 color set came in. I'm really excited about this. I have experience painting with Holbein watercolors in the past. You guys may have heard me mention them. And on a friend's recommendation, I just finally took the plunge and ordered the whole set since they're usually incredibly cheap on Amazon, like shockingly cheap. And you guys can find a link in the description below. Um, I think I paid like $25 for these 18 colors, which is a really good price. Now this is the Japanese packaging and it even includes a Holbein white Ibis watercolor paper sample inside and yeah it's taped up and ready so for this for this palette actually I ordered a very inexpensive metal palette this is like a Magello uh, watercolor palette I can link that in the description below as well so it comes with well it comes with the pans but it comes kind of you assemble it yourself. So it is a 24 palette, uh, color palette. And it's a little bit smaller than my normal palette, which you guys have seen in videos before. So for this, I thought I would swatch it two ways. I'm gonna swatch straight from the tube and then I'm also going to do an assembly uh, portion, which might be its own video. And then I'm going to swatch from the dried pan scents with some tube watercolors. The color can change a little bit, like certain Daniel Smith colors will change once you've uh, allowed them to dry. I think rhodamine pink goes from being like a really beautiful opera rose kind of color that is actually light fast to just an unimpressive hottish pink if you let it dry in a palette and then try to reconstitute it. So I did not think this was gonna be such an exciting struggle, but there you have it, there it is. And I decided to finally play around with some other brands because I've been using Winsor & Newton primarily for like the past five years now. And I use some other brands too, um, but I've just been having a lot of problems lately and I find I've been going through my semi-moist half pans really quickly. So I wanted to play around with some other uh, artist grade brands, give myself some more experience, opportunity to maybe enjoy some new colors or learn some new things. And a few fellow watercolorists, oh, it got stuck to itself. A few fellow water, oh, and it's worn out. A few fellow watercolorists over on Twitter said that they really like Holbein. So, highly recommended by professional artists worldwide since 19, uh, the 1900s. Are, <laughs> yeah. Holbein artist watercolors are produced using a simple combination of the finest pigments and gum arabic available. Holbein artist watercolors contain no synthetic polymers and only use small amounts of surfactants, allowing the artist more control over the dispersal of their watercolors while maintaining color integrity, intensity, and the highest permanency ratings. Holbein's commitment to using only the highest quality materials and their manufacturing excellence ensures vibrant, brilliant colors and consistent results with every tube produced. So inside we have the sample of white ibis. Feels nice, feels like a mold made watercolor cold press paper. And then there's a swatch sheet, which I really like. I think it can go in the top, but if I cut it, I can fit it in this little palette too. So the colors inside, so these are the five ML tubes partially why they're such a good price. Crimson Lake, Rose Matter, Vermilion Hue, Jean Brilliant, which is like a, a peachy kind of thing. Permanent Yellow Lemon, no, Permanent Yellow Lemon, Permanent Yellow Deep, Yellow ochre. Permanent green number one. Permanent green number two. Viridian hue. Compose blue. Cobalt blue hue. Prussian blue. Mineral violet. Hmm. Burnt sienna burnt umber, ivory black, and Chinese white. And even the cardboard sleeve for this is actually very nice. I love how much attention to detail 
they've gone into this. So it seems like I'm gonna be doing a lot of swatching because um, I do wanna swatch on the included paper, but I want my test swatches from the tube and the half pans to be comparable. So I'm gonna have to swatch on something else because there's just not enough room on the iris paper, which is actually in here. White ibis, sorry, like the bird. All right, so for the purposes of this review, we're going to be swatching on Canton Lacrell Heritage. I've worked with this paper before. It is a cotton rag paper. I have mixed feelings about it, but it'll be fine for swatching. It is a cold pressed paper, 140 pounds. And one of the plus sides is it is a nine by 12 pad. So it's big enough for me to do the before and the after swatches. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything kind of started. And we're just gonna work our way through the palette. So, this is Crimson Lake. Wanna see if it has the little metal thing? It doesn't. So, we can actually get right to it. And I'm going to. Do a tiny dot of paint. Recap it. And then use some clean water and a sable brush. You don't have to use sable, but why not? You're using nice paints. And I'm gonna dip into that and blend it out on this watercolor paper. And I'm just gonna do that with all the colors and then I'll check in with you guys. And as I do, I'm going to, let me see. So we have a color coding system here. So even if you don't read Japanese, you can fill it in. I'm gonna actually do the same. And just blend it out on the way to the top so that we can see both the full saturation and it sort of gradiated out. So I'll check in with you guys once I have this swatched. Okay, so I've got all of these swatched from the tube and for the tube insert, I'm going to go with the from tube uh, swatches as well. I'm gonna let these dry and then check in with you. And next we're going to be working on filling that metal palette. Okay, so this has had a chance to dry. It looks like other, all of the colors swatched from this whole bind set are very vivid colors. And it's slightly different than what I've seen in Western sets. The, let's see which purple it is. It is the mineral violet. Actually separates a bit out into a blue. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, they're all very vivid intense colors. Um, now my experience with Holbein is mostly using colors in their Iridori line and their neutral tint. And I really enjoy using those watercolors. So even though I'm a little bit um, unused to some of the colors in this palette, I'm excited about this and I'm sure it is a useful palette. It's just me getting used to that. And I also have to keep in mind that um, watercolor is often handled differently in Japan where Holbein is made than it traditionally has been handled in the West. So that might also influence my thinking. So I'm going to go ahead and begin assembling this palette. And I'm actually going to do that in another video that you guys can click here to watch. And that's part of the watercolor basic series. So I'll see you guys after I have all those pans loaded. So I've got my Holbein tube palette all set up. I'm going to let them dry overnight before I swatch them. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. So my assembled set has had a chance to dry overnight. They're still a little soft, so they're not completely dried out yet. I have a feeling that would actually take even longer, probably a week or so, which I don't necessarily have or want to have. So I'm gonna go ahead and start swatching them. We'll see if there's any difference. I've also found though that Holbein paints often stay uh, soft until they've fully dried out and then they start cracking. And you guys can watch me set up this palette by clicking the card here. And that's part of my watercolor basic series, that little demonstration. So 
It's really very simple and it's kind of self-explanatory, but it's nice to have. I'm, I'm kind of a completionist even when it comes to information. So it's nice to have examples of everything I'm talking about so I can just quickly link it. Actually, I'm noticing I'm getting a better color dispersal with the paint in this form. So kind of glad I went ahead and put them in a palette. I'm still trying to decide what paper I'm gonna use. Oh, I feel like I missed one. I think I did miss one. Oh, that's frustrating. I'm gonna leave space for that. Finish this up and then go do that. I can't believe I did that. Cause that means I have to move everything over in my palette. So I did not spray activate these um, because they're still kind of wet. Oh, a little bit of blue in our But I'm finding that the colors are uh, even more saturated and bright. Well, say that, and then this one was not. So unfortunately, because I missed that green, it means I have to fill it and then wait overnight again, and then swatch from there. So I'm gonna do an opacity test by drawing just a line here with this waterproof um, brush pen. Give that a little time to cure and then I'm gonna come over it with the white or go over it with the white. My Viridian Green has had a chance to dry overnight. So I'm going to complete my swatches. So I'm gonna do green and then white. So here is our Viridian Green. And then we're gonna grab some Chinese white. I have to say, I kind of like how these Holbein tube watercolors perform from a palette rather than straight from the tube. I think the colors are a little bit um, brighter, uh, maybe a little less saturated in some cases, but they also seem easier to work with. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for these tests. I hope you guys will check out the Holbein uh, field test that's coming up soon. And I hope you guys, if you are looking for an affordable set of watercolors, I hope you'll consider this 18 piece Holbein watercolor set for yourself. It was under $30 and then, you know, the cost of buying a palette is another 13. So you get a lot of watercolor for not a lot of money. And these are actually high quality artist grade watercolors. So I will see you guys again really soon. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure you check out my watercolor basic series over on natosuit.blogspot.com and here on the channel. Bye guys.